Well, the best job I ever had was probably the third job I ever had, which was in an ice cream parlour. And it was in the old OS service station on the England side of the old Seven Bridge, which at the time was the M4 motorway, but of course it's now the M48. And the ice cream parlour, well, it was more of a cupboard really, or a closet. And it was staffed by one person, me. But bearing in mind this is the late 80s, it had a bewildering array of up to eight flavours of ice cream. There was vanilla and strawberry and chocolate and minty jockey chippy and toffee fuji. But it also had a Mr. Whippy machine. Oh, I love Mr. Whippy. Just the raw, milky product out of the can before you put it in the machine. It's delicious. And it also had a popcorn machine. And there were guidelines on how to make the popcorn. But I used to make my own ever-improving recipe of more butter, more salt. Oh, it was delicious. It was a bit strong. It used to make your teeth chatter. And I loved that job. And one day, it was a Saturday, and it was the middle of a very, very hot summer. And there was a queue as far as the eye could see. And this rather large American came along with his rather large wife and his two rather large children. And he took one look at the selection of scooped ice cream and laughed and said, my God, is this all you've got? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, in America, they have a hundred varieties of ice cream and they serve them this big. So I thought I was being quite clever and witty and I simply said well in this country sir we make them to fit our mouths three quarters of an hour later I was in the manager's office and he just said one thing to me you're fired The worst job I ever had was probably the second job I ever had, which was at a golf and country club just outside Chepstow in South Wales. Very, very, very long hours every day serving extremely ungrateful people with bottles of wine. And if they were short staffed, you'd tend bar, which I hated because I couldn't tot up all the totals in my head. The only saving glory was that I once received a £20 tip from Shaking Stevens.
Don't make a mess of it, you're on film. I'm Kim Perry and I'm the Operations Manager for the Rosa Powerboat and we take disabled groups, children, nursing homes for day trips on the Leeds of Liverpool Canal and it's booked for the day by one, one group a day. The favourite car I ever owned was the first car I ever owned, which was a brown Mini Clubman called Errol, after Errol Brown from Hot Chocolate. And I loved that car and went everywhere in it, as you do when you're a young lad and you've passed your driving test and you now have your freedom. And of course, being a young lad with his first car, it wasn't long before I gave her a few choice modifications, including an extremely noisy back box, but she sounded glorious. A 1098cc engine, though I told everyone it was a 1275, because the 1275, that was the performance benchmark that everybody wanted to live up to and own. But the bodywork, mainly the A panels and the wings, started to rust and it wasn't long before holes appeared. So I decided to take an angle grinder to the A panels and the wings and the front grille and the bonnet. I cut it all off and I fitted a hinged one piece white fiberglass flip front. Never painted it and it's just ruined totally ruined and i sold her in the end to a young lad still told him it was a 1275 and he was over the moon and the last i heard about her she'd been in a quite a major head-on collision and she quite literally folded in half he was all right though thank heavens Yes, I once owned a Lamborghini and uh, I went in my local pub one day and I told the people in there that I had a Lamborghini parked outside and uh, they didn't believe me. So we all went outside and had a look and there it was. But what I failed to tell them was it was a Lamborghini bicycle. So from that moment on, for years, my nickname was Lambo.
Vodka. Oh no, vodka. Even the mention of the name, I start to feel queasy. And I only have to taste it or even smell it. And quite literally, I become violently and physically sick. And it's quite simple why. It was my 18th birthday and I went into my local pub and I stupidly told the barman that it was my 18th birthday. And all night I drank about four or five halves of Welsh bitter. But unknown to me that whenever I went to the loo or took my turn on the pool table several people were chipping together and putting quadruple vodkas in it. So by the end of the night I was outside hurling everywhere and I was ill for days. The worst night out I had, by far, is actually whilst I've had Aslan. And I was contacted one day by someone who was wondering if I'd be interested in making eight short promotional videos, about ten minutes long each, of the various bands that he managed. and. He would pay me, if I was interested, £500 per video. Now, of course I was interested. 4,000 quid, thank you very much. So I arranged to meet this guy. And he turned up and we walked along the towpath to where his car was parked. And he said we'd go to a local pub. And we got in the car and set off and it's now dark. And he was flying along. And it's very, very narrow, tight country lanes, bombing along, flying around corners, up the embankments, weaving all over the place. And he kept turning his lights off accidentally. And it struck me quite quickly that he was completely and utterly smashed out of his skull. He was drunk like you wouldn't believe. And this went on for 20 minutes or so and we eventually arrived at the pub. And we ground to a halt on the gravel and went in the pub and I got my pint and we sat down and had our business meeting if you can call that didn't go very well and in the end he was ready to go and I thought well there's no way in a month of Sundays I'm going to risk my life going through that again so I said that I was going to stay because it was a nice pub and that one of the staff was going to give me a lift back to the boat but they weren't and I left later I had no idea where I was but the staff had pointed me roughly in the direction of the canal and I started walking and walking and walking and now it was getting quite late and also very cold and it started raining 
and it got to about half twelve and I was getting quite concerned so I phoned the police non-emergency number explained what had happened and that I was quite worried for my well-being I was basically told that all the police officers were out on more important stuff and that I would be wise to stop wasting police time so I kept walking and it's now half one wet cold and I eventually found an old railway bridge on a disused railway and I slept under there until it was light and by chance I found the canal and eventually I got back on the boat so yes I could have made myself a very tidy sum of money but no Thank you so much for watching, cheers for now and I'll see you soon.